Hello students, my name is Dr. Ominde and I'm going to um, discuss briefly about the limbic um, system. So the limbic system has got cortical and subcortical brain components that are structurally intercontinented, interconnected sorry, and functionally integrated. So both cortical and subcortical parts will work together and these are usually concerned with self-perpetuation and self-propagation. They control emotion, behavior and memory. So this picture shows parts of the limbic system. We have the amygdala there, the hippocampus, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. We are going to discuss other parts. So. The components of the limbic system include the hippocampal formation. So when we ask you, list three parts that form the hippocampal formation. We have the hippocampus, dentate gyrus, and the inducium grisium. Other components of the limbic system include the cingulate gyrus, the anchors, amygdala, parahippocampal gyra, subcalosal gyrus, the entorhinal cortex that has the anterior part of the parahippocampus and the anchors, the neocortical areas like orbitofrontal cortex, prefrontal association areas, superior, middle, and inferior temporal gyra. We also have the septum pellucidum, the septal nuclei, piriformis lobe with the nucleus accumbens, substantia nigra. Parts of the hypothalamus are also components of the limbic system like mammillary bodies and the preoptic nuclei. Parts of the thalamus, including anterior, lateral dorsal, and medial dorsal nuclei as well as intralamina thalamic nuclei of the thalamus. We also have habenular nuclei, olfactory nerves, bulbs, tracts, stria, and trigon, reticular formation, the phonics, stria terminalis, and stria medullaris thalamus. So we have various cortical and subcortical parts that form components of the limbic system. So that's the hypothalamus and the thalamus. Then this here is a amygdala then hippocampus all right and then that's the phonix this is the phonix this is the thalamus remember the mammillary bodies that are part of the hypothalamus and then we have a septum pellucidum here remember this is our cingulate gyrus it has a cingulum which is also part of the um, limbic system septum pellucidum that's the hippocampus and the amygdala again cingulate gyrus Okay, you have septum there, olfactory tract, olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, olfactory stria are all parts of the limbic system. Then we have the hypothalamus there, amygdala, hippocampus, and mammal hypothalamus. Amygdala, hippocampus, that's the phonix, that's mammillary body of the hypothalamus. This is hypothalamus, and that's the cingulate gyrus. Okay, again, um from the corpus callosum corpus callosum is joined onto the phonics via the septum pellucidum this is the phonics and the phonics has parts okay so you have the anterior columns of the phonics then you have the commissures or the uh, hippocampal uh, uh, sorry you have anterior columns and posterior columns that are joined by the commissure of the phonics okay then other parts of the limbic system you have this here Remember our amygdala is here and this is a hippocampus. Then that convolution is a dented gyrus. This is the fimbria. All right, so amygdala is connected to hippocampus and we said hippocampal formation is formed by hippocampus, dented gyrus and the inducium grisium. This is the fimbria. These are the posterior columns of the phonics. And these are the anterior columns of the phonics that connect with the mammillary bodies of the hypothalamus. Again, part of the limbic system, we have the amygdala here that connects with the hippocampus. Okay, hippocampus is just neighboring the, the parahippocampus. Then that's the fimbria of the phonics with the posterior columns of the phonics, the anterior columns of the phonics connecting to the mammillary body of the hypothalamus. This is the septum pellucidum connecting the phonics to the corpus callosum. Okay, corpus callosum is okay. And then this, 
This here is our indicium grisium. So we said hippocampal formation is formed by hippocampus with dented gyrus around it and the indicium grisium. Then the cingulate gyrus is usually on top of the hip, uh, corpus callosum. Septum pellucidum fix, uh, connects corpus callosum to the phonics and the phonics has anterior columns that um, con connect to the mammillary body of hypothalamus. Then you have the posterior columns and the fimbria. This is the subcallosal area, that's the paraterminal gyra. This is the anterior commissure. All right. So these are the parts of the <coughs> limbic system. Again, the hippocampus. So we have this is um, a section showing you the hippocampus S shaped. So this is the hippocampal fissure. So it has three parts. The C, A, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so this is the hippocampus together with the uh, dentate and the indicium grisium, they form the hippocampal formation. So C, A stands for communis ammonis. Okay. Then, so from the hippocampus, you get to the subiculum. Then subiculum uh, connects with it, is the lateral ventricle. This is the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle. And the lateral ventricle contains choroid plexus, the fimbria of the phonics. This is alveus. Cornus, ammonis, one, two, three, and four. These are parts of the hippocampus. So hippocampus together with dented gyrus and indicium grisium will form hippocampal formation. So hippocampus is joined to the parahippocampus by the subiculum. So again, we see it olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, which divides into medial stria and lateral stria. Apart, these olfactory parts are the limbic system. Then, septum pellucidum connects corpus callosum to the phonics. The phonics has anterior columns, it has a body, posterior columns, and the fimbria. Okay, then remember the dented system uh, will form the hippocampal formation. This is the ancus, usually the medial. Uh, part remedial end of the rostral part of the parahippocampus. This is the subcallosal gyra. This is and that's the anterior perforated substance. So what's the function of limbic system? When I was in the first year of my medical school, I had one lecturer who always told us to remember the functions of the limbic system. Just remember food, sex, and alcohol. So it was very funny, but till today I remember that food, sex, and alcohol. So it will tell you that you're going to control emotions. So whatever emotions, um, going to control um, social sexual um, aspect. Intake of food, so your feeding behavior will be controlled by the limbic system. Alcohol means just, um, you know, it's the social aspect of, of life, okay? So the limbic system helps to modulate the autonomic functions, like amygdala will modulate hypothalamic activity and brainstem autonomic centers. Then we also have the modulation of homeostatic mechanism to maintain the body at a good environment in which its physiological functions can perform normally. Then Thirst drive and body fluid regulation, that's also um, it's part of modulating the activity of the hypothalamus. Then we have modulation of behavior like feeding and social sexual aggression, control of emotions like fear, and then we have learning and memory. For example, the hippocampus is responsible for long-term memory. So look at that again, olfactory bulb tract. Refractory stria, lateral and medial, all these are parts of the limbic system. Then we have the hippocampus together with the dented gyrus and the indicium grisium will form the hippocampal formation. Then we have parts of the phonics, the anterior columns, the body, the posterior columns and the fimbria are also components of the, of the limbic system. Anterior column communicates with the mammillary bodies of the hypothalamus. Then we have the um, septum pellucidum as part of the limbic system as well as the cingulate gyrus okay the thalamus is also part of the limbic system and we have a striata that also participates um, in the limbic system so this is what we call the papers circuit it's how information um, uh, the communication between the different components of the limbic system so 
if we are to begin here from the entorhinal cortex remember entorhinal cortex is formed by the parahippocampus and ancus okay so this will communicate with the hippocampus the hippocampus is connected to the uh, phonix the fimbria of the fimbria then the crus of the phonix the posterior crus the body then the anterior crus that will bring the information to the uh, mammillary body of the hypothalamus so from entorhinal cortex to hippocampus to the fimbria posterior columns the body of phonix anterior columns that will communicate with the mammillary bodies so these mammillary bodies also communicate and send the information to anterior nucleus of the thalamus which sends the information to the cingulum within the cingulate gyrus and this brings back to the hippocampus so this papers circuit is very important so you need to remember it and torrhinal cortex communicates with the hippocampus which communicates with the fimbria of the phonics to the posterior columns of the phonics the body of the phonics then to the anterior uh, columns of the phonics and this take information to the mammillary nuclei of the hypothalamus. Then through mammillothalamic tracts, from mammillary body to anterior nucleus of thalamus, and from the thalamus to the cingulate, uh, the cingulum within the cingulate gyrus, and that brings the information back to the hippocampus. Again, the papaya circuit, okay, from the entorhinal cortex to the hippocampus, from the hippocampus through the phonix to the mammillary body, through mammillothalamic tract to the anterior nucleus of thalamus which will project to the cingulate gyrus and that takes the information back to the um, parahippocampus that projects to the entorhinal cortex again from the entorhinal cortex which is the parahippocampus and ancus to the hippocampus okay through the fimbria the posterior crus of the phonix body of phonix anterior columns of phonix to the mammillary body of the hypothalamus mammillothalamic tract will carry to anterior nucleus of the thalamus that will project to the cingulate gyra and through the hippocampus and the entorhinal cortex and take it back to the hippocampus so that's the papaya's circuit what are the disorders of the limbic system so uh, uh, if there are lesions within the components of the limbic system, the patient can present with emotional lability. They could have extreme rage or aggression. You just do something small that annoys them, but the amount of rage they manifest is extreme. Then we also have eating disorders like anorexia, nervosa, and bulimia. We have what we call clover Barsi syndrome, where you have behavioral changes following bilateral removal of the temporal lobe. So the patient will be eating too much all the time. Then there is hypersexuality. Hypersexuality is always having the urge to have sexual intercourse. Then hyperphagia is eating a lot. And then we have memory deficits because we uh, we talked about the hippocampus being responsible for long-term memory. Thank you very much. I hope you've understood um, about the limbic system, the various parts of the limbic system. You need to remember hippocampal formation is by hippocampus, dentate and indicium grisium. You need to remember information comes from the entorhinal cortex, which is formed by the parahippocampus and the ancus. Then the information, you need to trace the papaya circuit from the entorhinal cortex to the hippocampus to the phonix, to the mammillary bodies of the hypothalamus, through mammillothalamic tracts to the thalamic nuclei, and from there project to um, the cingulum that brings it back to the entorhinal cortex. So I hope you've understood. Always remember, limbic system is for food, sex, and alcohol. So the social well-being of a person, control how you feed, control your memories, control your emotions, and your sexual life that's limbic system i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much